This video is the first of three videos discussing how to balance reduction oxidation reactions. In this video, we'll be covering how to balance reactions under neutral conditions. In future videos, we'll be discussing how to balance reactions in acidic conditions and basic conditions. Before we get started, uh, there's some prerequisites to this video. If you can't do these things, uh, then the stuff in this video isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. Uh, first of all, you need to be able to balance regular chemical reactions. I imagine for most of us that's not too big of a problem anymore. Uh, more recently, you need to be able to know how to assign oxidation numbers to individual elements based on uh, charges and the rules we have for oxidation numbers. And last but not least, you need to be able to identify what atoms are being oxidized and reduced, as well as be able to write redu reduction and oxidation half reactions. If there's any of these things you cannot already do, please go back in your notes or in other videos, review this material, and then come back before we get started. Now that that's underway, uh, let's talk about the objectives of this video itself. Uh, we are going to spend a little bit of time recapping what a reduction oxidation reaction is and why they are different than other types of chemical reactions we've handled earlier in this year. We're then going to drive right into the rules for balancing redox reactions. Uh, as we've kind of already alluded to, balancing redox reactions is a little bit different and a little bit more challenging. Uh, in order to help you guys organize some of your information, we're going to write down a set of rules uh, to guide you through the process. And then last but not least, uh, we're going to talk about some example problems. We have two of them we're going to work on today that are going to deal exclusively with reactions in neutral conditions. These are the easiest of the three. So as I said, we'll start by talking about a quick recap of what reduction oxygen or redox reactions actually are. And these are at reactions where there's a transfer of electrons between atoms during the course of the reaction itself. And this transfer of electrons, we notice because it, it causes a change in charges. We have elements that gain electrons, and as a result, their charge goes down. We have elements that lose electrons, and as a result, their charge goes up. Now, when we're going to balance these reactions, we need to worry about conserving, and that's what balancing is all about. And just like before, we have to conserve or balance for the number of atoms and the reactants and the products. We cannot gain or lose atoms during the process of a chemical reaction. What's new in redox reactions is that we also need to balance for the numbers of electrons gained during the reduction process and the number of electrons lost during the oxidation process. That number gained and number lost must be the same from the beginning to the end of the reaction to ensure that no electrons have disappeared from our universe. So moving right along, um, as I already mentioned, there are three types of redox reactions that we will be responsible for balancing. Reactions in neutral conditions, and that's what this video is going to focus on. These are the easiest of the three, and quite frankly, once we get done with this, you'll see that there's really nothing special going on with this process other than it illustrates what happens in a redox reaction. The two more challenging ones we'll be dealing with are reactions in acidic conditions and ac reactions in basic conditions. Uh, we haven't worked a lot with acids and bases yet so far this year, uh, but based on our basic understanding here, acids are solutions that contain atoms with the H plus ion in solution. This is what defines them as an acid. And basic solutions are ones that contain reactions with excess OH ions, the hydroxide ion, and that's what makes them bases. As a result of this having these extras, uh, we have basically either H plus ions or OH ions available for us to use in the reaction to help in the balancing process. If that doesn't make sense right now, it certainly will after we talk about those videos. One last thing before we move on, uh, you'll notice down here we have something that should hopefully look a little bit familiar and something we'll talk a lot more later on in this chapter, and that is the pH scale. It's a way of measuring the acidity of our solution. Uh, if you recall from before, pHs below 7 are the acidic ones. pHs above 7 are described as either alkaline or basic. And then when we're at the pH of 7, they're neutral. So just to recap with what we're talking about before, our reactions today are going to deal with reactions happening at a neutral pH. Reactions in later videos are going to deal with either acidic conditions, pH is below 7, or basic conditions, pH is above 7. The actual pH doesn't matter right now, we just need to keep track of acidic versus basic. And this brings us now to the rules for balancing a redox reaction. All we're going to be writing down in a moment is a set of steps to follow to balance all types of redox reactions. So these steps will balance neutral, acidic, and basic. But since the rules cover all three types, keep in mind that depending on what type you're actually balancing, you may not necessarily need to do all the individual steps. Some steps are specific to acidic, some steps are specific to basic, uh, and some steps apply in all three cases. 
What you're going to want to do over the next two slides is either copy down the rules, they're going to be written down, uh, or you can pause this video, print the steps that are linked at the, at the bottom of the page, and then kind of take notes as we go along. We're not going to discuss the individual rules all that much, but rather we're going to work through problems and show how these rules are actually used. I think that'll be a much easier way of, of getting an idea of how they work. So here's our first couple rules on balancing redox reactions. Again, if you have not printed this out, you can pause the video and do that, or you can start writing these rules down yourself. Um, the rules themselves are relatively straightforward. I'll just point out a couple key points here that might be a little interesting. Uh, first of all, when we go to balance these reactions, at reactions that contain oxygen and hydrogen, we're going to balance in a separate way. When you balance your reactions from the step one, you want to balance them except for the elements oxygen and hydrogen. Just leave them alone for now. Next couple steps are pretty self-explanatory. Steps four and five are where we start getting to steps that are specific for certain conditions. These are reactions, these are steps that are only applied to reactions in acidic or basic, meaning we're not going to use these today. Step five is the same situation. If we move on to the next page here, we see again we've got some step specific or some reaction specific ones. Step six is only applies to basic solutions. We'll only tackle this in later videos. And then the last couple steps, seven, eight, and nine, are where we're going to be dealing with everything. The one step I will point out here is step number seven is kind of the key step. This is where we really balance electrons. If you recall from before, that's what we talked about as the second necessary part for balancing redox reactions. Here's where we make sure that the electrons released during the oxidation process are the same number as the electrons gained during the reduction process. And that's it for steps. Like I said, feel free to rewind or pause the video as necessary to get these copied down. Uh, but I think the most important thing we can do right now is show how these are actually being used in the process. So we'll start with our first example uh, in this chemical reaction. The copper plus one ion in aqueous solution is reacting with solid, si uh, solid iron metal. Uh, this reaction produces solid copper, which will plate out on the surface of the iron, as well as the iron plus three ion, which will go back into solution uh, and be aqueous. Uh, our job, again, is to ensure that this reaction is not only balanced for the number of atoms, uh, but also balanced in terms of the number of electrons that are exchanged between the two. What you should have in front of you right now is the list of individual steps necessary Necessary to balance this reaction and we're going to go through those one at a time. All right, so step one says to balance the reaction for the number of atoms present aside from oxygen and hydrogen. And as we can see from this reaction, that is already taken care of. Uh, the number of copper atoms is the same on both sides and the number of iron atoms is the same on both sides. So we can skip through step one. Step number two says we have to assign oxidation numbers to all the individual elements. Um, that all being said, this is also relatively straightforward to do. Uh, if you guys remember from your uh, oxidation number rules, in this case these are all monoatomic ions and their oxidation states are determined by their charges. That makes the charge here of the copper plus one. That makes the charge of the iron zero because it's in its elemental or solid state. The charge of the copper ends up being zero and the charge of the iron in this case ends up being plus three. This should allow us to identify now what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. Well, if you recall, reduced is when we gain electrons. We can say the copper goes from the plus one state to the zero. A reduction in charge or an increase in the number of electrons tells us we're dealing with reduction. Um, the other atom dealing with here is iron. Iron goes from zero to plus three. An increase in charge means a loss of electrons. That means the iron in this case is being oxidized. So that's step one. That's step two. Uh, what those two things allow us to do now is to write down our reduction and oxidation half reactions, which is what we're expected to do in step three. Um, so we can start with our reduction half reaction. Reduction. Uh, we're going to have the copper plus one ion. Um, the copper plus one ion, since it's being reduced, is going to be reacted with one electron. And that one electron then plus the copper is going to get us the copper ion with a charge of zero. And that's our reduction half reaction. What I like to do when I'm doing these problems then is to leave a little bit of space. This is going to allow us to do work as next is necessary. Uh, the next thing we'll write down is our oxidation half reaction. That is the iron atom in its neutral state. That's going to react to form the iron plus three. And because the iron atom lost three electrons to become the plus three state, we write out those three electrons here showing that they are separate from the uh, iron atom. We get two separate products here. Again, thinking back to our writing half reactions, the reduction all reaction always has electrons as a reactant, and the oxidation reaction always has electrons as a product. Uh, again, if you're struggling with writing these reactions, though, let's go back and review some notes on writing half reactions themselves. 
So that covers uh, steps one, two, and three now. Uh, if you look on your sheet, step four and five and six only deal with reactions that are either in acidic or basic conditions. Uh, so it allows us to skip those for now. We'll come back to those in later videos. Step seven then, if we skip down the page a little bit, says we have to balance those half reactions for the numbers of electrons gained or lost. If we notice in this half of the reaction, we have three elect or one electron that's being released or being used, I'm sorry, by the copper atom. But in our other half reaction, we have three electrons are being released. This reaction is not conserved for the number of electrons, even though it is conserved for the number of atoms. And this again is why we need to balance these reactions differently. There's more going on than just making sure there's the same number of copper and iron atoms here. Well, step seven says to fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply our half reactions by a constant multiple. For example, if I take this half reaction here, the reduction, and I were to do that reduction process three times, that would get me the necessary three electrons to cancel out with the three electrons that were released in the oxidation part. It's important to note that this 3 applies to everything in the reaction. If we just did 3 times the electron, it would no longer represent the number of electrons given off by the copper. That being said, to get 3 electrons out, we have to start with 3 copper plus ions, reacting with 3 electrons in order to create 3 copper, 3 atoms of copper metal. If it helps you, taking a second to cross out the old half reaction so we don't use it, not necessarily a bad idea. We've now set things up so that this half reaction um, uses the same number of electrons that this half reaction gains. That completes things for step seven. What we want to do now is rewrite these two reactions, the half reactions, in one big line and then start canceling some things out. Uh, so we're going to get three copper plus ions plus the three electrons that it has plus the iron atom from the oxidation reaction, and that's all going to react to form three copper atoms plus an iron atom with a charge of plus three plus the three electrons that were left over. So we've taken these two reactions here and we've combined them into one big long line. Step eight then says to, um, I'm sorry, step nine then, sorry about that, says to take anything that's in both the reactants and product side of our reaction and cancel those out. This will always have to happen. Here we're going to cross out the three electrons on the reactant side with the three electrons on the product side, leaving just what's happening with the atoms themselves, and then we can rewrite our reactions. Three copper plus one ions plus the iron atom is going to react to yield three copper metal ions, the, the neutral state, plus the iron plus three. And this is now our balanced reaction that's balanced not only for the number of atoms, notice they're balanced on both sides, but also balanced for the number of electrons. And also note that it would have been impossible to get to this type of result unless we had also considered the balancing of electrons on top of the balancing of the individual uh, atoms. Let's try one more reaction before we wrap things up today. If you feel like you get it and you want to move on to practice problems, by all means do so. Uh, but I think one more time might not be such a bad idea. Uh, again, we've got a reaction here where we've got some oxidation and reduction. Our first part of the reaction says to balance the reaction itself. Uh, in this case, the reaction is already balanced, so step one is taken care of. Step two is to assign oxidation numbers. Again, this is all based on charges of either elements in their elemental state or with their charges of the ions. The oxidation number here is zero, the oxidation is plus three, magnesium's new oxidation is plus two, and aluminum goes to zero. This allows us then to do step three, which is to write our half reactions. Uh, in this case, magnesium is in our oxidation half reaction. It's going from the charge of zero. That magnesium atom is giving off uh, some electrons to turn into magnesium plus two, plus the two electrons that it lost. We can do the reduction half reaction by saying that aluminum metal in its plus three state is combining with three electrons. Uh, and as a result of combining with those three electrons, we're able to become aluminum in the charge of zero state. So we got our oxidation and reduction half reactions. Steps five, six, and seven, again, only apply to things in acidic and basic conditions, so we can skip them. Uh, I'm sorry, steps four, five, and six. Step seven, we do need to do, says we have to balance the reaction for numbers of electrons. We've got two in this half reaction. We've got three in this half reaction. Unfortunately, they don't have a constant multiple in common, but we can have a least common multiple for the both of them. Uh, if I take this half reaction and multiply it by three, and this half reaction and multiply it by two, that's gonna get us to six electrons in both cases. We'll get two mg 
reacting to yield 2mg plus 2 plus, oh, sorry, these should all be threes, right? And that'll get us plus six electrons. We can cross out the old version of the reaction. Uh, and then down here, we've got the aluminum plus three. We got two of those plus six electrons, and that's going to react to yield two aluminum metals uh, when we're all done. And again, cross out the old version of the reaction. That was step seven. Step eight says to combine them into one final reaction. We'll do that over here a little bit. We get three Mg plus the two aluminum plus threes plus the six electrons. That's going to react to yield three Mg plus two plus six electrons plus the two aluminum metals. All of that stuff combines. Again, we cancel out anything that shows up on both sides of the reaction. Uh, we end up with the final reaction that says three magnesiums plus two aluminum plus threes is going to react to yield three magnesium plus twos plus two aluminum metals. And we now have a balanced version of this reaction that not only is balanced for the number of atoms, but also balance for the number of electrons as well. So we balance this reaction for uh, with taking in consideration our redox conditions. All right, uh, let's wrap things up for this video. Uh, at this stage in the game, you should be able to identify reactions as being redox. You should be able to determine the oxidation states of individual atoms in the reaction. You should be able to determine what element is being oxidized or reduced, write a half reaction for both of these, and finally, and probably most importantly for today, you should be able to then balance a redox reaction based on all the information we just talked about. And this is only true for neutral conditions. Uh, if you're looking for how to balance in acidic and basic conditions, there'll be videos of those, of those coming up, so check those out.